Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Doug, and as we approach here the end of 2021 calendar year, I wanted to share with you some of the observations that I've made about the cap market, specifically the fitted cap market, this past year of 2021. The first one that I really saw was just this continued onslaught from some of the larger vendors along the lines of side patches and custom colorways and colored undervisors. This has been an absolutely huge trend in fitted caps especially, and uh, there was really no let up. Um, you had vendors like Lids and Hat Club on the larger end of the spectrum, of course, pumping out collections here and there. And then you even had some uh, traditional vendors, New Era, trying to cash in late during the year. And then there was also a number of smaller vendors that were trying to get into the game as well. So we saw tons of these proliferating. When Lids jumped into it, they were all in. I mean, once they started releasing one of these collections, it just seems like it was just a constant stream of collection releases from Lids. And that was mostly taking place in their stores. But a lot of these collections were winding up online too, sometimes before the store releases. It was all very confusing, but there was no doubt that they were pumping out the collections like crazy. Some of the highlights based on the demand and things that I saw seemed to be the Rust Belt collection and maybe the Irish Cream collection. So uh, those were a couple, but there were so many of them that uh, it became hard to keep track of them after a little while. And constantly you had to be shifting between what was happening in the stores and what would find its way online that you could get at their website. So uh, no doubt they blanketed the whole market with these collections. Now, the same can be said for Hat Club, which has, of course, been doing uh, cap releases on a very, very regular basis for some time now. 2021 saw them continue the releases of very large collections, sometimes mid-sized collections. Many of these, uh, in fact, almost all of them were along the lines of a custom colorway, a side patch, and a colored undervisor. And they had all sorts of themes. I've saved all the cap release emails that they send out and I kind of looked through them to prepare for this video and I was even amazed at what I saw there. Just the ongoing list of all these different collections that Hat Club did. And it's safe to say that most of their collections were inspired by some sort of pop culture tie-in. Um, probably the two that come to mind most quickly are the cereal pack and the candy pack in which they looked at uh, classic cereals that you grew up with, maybe watching Saturday morning cartoons and use the colorway from that in the design of the cap, um, again, with MLB teams. Same goes for the candy pack, and they did plenty of these, um, but it was really using these pop culture kind of elements that are very familiar, using that to drive the colorway design of the cap. Now, some of these pop culture tie-ins were getting a little strange to me, especially with some of the smaller vendors and the, and the collections they were releasing. It almost seems like this was such a frenzy to deliver this kind of collection and sell it that the cap designers were kind of digging at the bottom of the barrel to come up with the latest colorway and the latest pop culture touchstone to link that to. It seemed to me that near the end of the year, they're really running out of ideas and running lean on things that they can use for inspiration. At this point for me, it's starting to feel really played out and very tired. And certainly you're seeing that in the recycling of the same side patch into these different colorways because there just aren't that many side patch designs out there. I mentioned before that New Era kind of got into this game too in the late uh, part of the year in the fall. Now they started with some fall themed collections. I think there was a spooky Halloween tie in and maybe then a Thanksgiving dinner or something like that. Um, but the strangest thing of all is that New Era, when they chose to get into the uh, strange colorway, number one, they didn't do side patches, which was kind of steering clear of the biggest part of the trend. Um, but number two, they chose NBA fitteds for a number of these collections. And uh, from personal experience, whenever I review an NBA collection on my channel, 
it almost always gets the lowest number of views of recent videos that I've posted. So, um, you know, to me, it was a little bit of a puzzling choice for New Era to try and get into this custom colorway game in a big way and choose NBA fitteds. Meanwhile, it was very quiet on the official collection side from New Era and others. So there was a smaller number of collections released, either that or they were utterly forgettable in my view. It was not marked by a lot of great official releases. And when I say official, I'm thinking about things like clubhouse collections, spring training caps, others like that, the new era does in the course of a normal year. Now we started out with a complete retread of the 2020 spring training caps, which were poorly received to begin with. I thought they were some of the worst ones we've had in years. Um, and we got those recycled again, probably due to the holdover effects of the pandemic, lockdown, ongoing COVID and supply chain issues. So I understand maybe why we got that, but it was still disappointing. But then you also had kind of a, what I would call a tepid release for the All-Star game. And it was like, as soon as it was named to take place in Colorado, then that purple crept into everything and onto every cap. So I just did not enjoy that collection either. Purple is a great color for the Rockies. No doubt it's part of their colorway, but I did not need to see that on every single cap for the All-Star game. Now we didn't get a player's weekend or any kind of similar collection like that. We did get the Field of Dreams caps, but that was only for two teams because it was the White Sox and Yankees in that game. And so we got some throwback caps for that, but no other teams along that theme. And I thought the 4th of July offer was reasonable. You had sets of Navy and then red caps uh, with a city of origin or uh, home city on the side. And I thought that was a nice touch. So that was a decent collection during the middle of the season. Now on the clubhouse collection front, I've actually, I think I've lost track of when the last clubhouse collection we really got was. I think it was 2020 with, with kind of the grid fabric that was meant to be a little bit more of a performance fabric. And then they also had the uh, silicone rubberized logo appliques on the front of those caps. Um, but I think those just really stayed the same like the spring training caps. So, uh, but I'll admit I kind of lost track of those. So with all those things going on with the official caps, the other thing that I thought really emerged during 2021 was maybe a possible split in the fitted community. Now I say that not to invite all sorts of terrible comments in the comments section below this video, because I'm not trying to pit anybody against each other. But um, I would say that there was definitely a side to the fitted market that followed the colorway patch under visor side. And there was also a part of that community that uh, longs for a little bit more of the traditional designs, traditional collection releases, and maybe a little bit more minimal approach to the caps themselves. So that part of the community might be checking out a vendor like Ebbetsfield Flannels, which does great throwback vintage caps, of course, um, because they're looking for a little bit more of the traditional approach. Now, certainly the hottest part of the market was the colorway patch combos, and that continued to drive a huge demand. But in all sorts of forums out there, social media, et cetera, I could see a little bit of a departure between the fans of one side of that cap design debate and the other, which is the more minimal traditional side. Not that I, I think it's uh, causing a rift in the community or anything like that, because I think we all kind of rally around the 5950 anyways. But nonetheless, I do see kind of a departure in the design philosophies. There's probably a growing constituency that wants to see a return to a little bit more traditional cap designs. Now, I would consider myself a little bit more on the minimal side. I really like the single logo at the front. Don't always need a side patch, although I do appreciate a good, well-designed side patch and what it can add to a cap. I just don't need them on all my caps. And for the last real trend in 2021 that we all saw, I'm sure, is that like almost everything in ordinary life, uh, price pressure and supply chain problems crept into the hat community as well. 
Uh, we saw tremendously rising prices on the caps. A part of that's certainly been driven by the market demand for fitted caps again. But there are elements of that that are due to standard inflation on commodities and other ingredients in the manufacture of caps. There's also been supply chain pressures and uh, logistical difficulties which have added to that. So the market for fitted caps has been pressured just like anything else that we've seen throughout 2021. So if we look ahead to 2022 and think about what that might bring, well, I guess my biggest hope for that is maybe the return of a little bit more imagination in the design and release of caps that goes beyond the colorway patch under visor combo. Again, I mentioned, I think that trend is a little bit played out now. What I'm hoping for is just a little bit more balance that we can get some newer, fresher designs that don't rely on that trend all of the time. And then secondly, um, I would actually hope for a limit to the runaway demand and the runaway prices of fitted caps that result from that. I will be totally honest and say that if I want to keep buying caps for different teams, different designs, etc., I have started to look at models besides the 5950 simply because the prices are getting very hard to keep up with. So um, it's, it's tough to justify buying uh, caps that are now routinely um, getting closer and closer to $50 for a single cap. There's loyalty programs, there's discounts, et cetera, but it's still a high starting price for a base cap. And so that's why I'm looking at other models and we'll hope that there's some relief on pricing in 2022. So there you have it. That's my observations on the fitted cap market in 2021. We'll hope for some interesting new developments in 2022, of course. In the meantime, if you have any questions on how to stretch, shrink, shape, edit, or otherwise maintain the caps that you already have, then scroll down to the description below where I've got links to some of my best videos that'll show you how to do those things. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next year.